I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. With the upcoming release of Assassin's Creed Unity, Ubisoft was cool enough to send us a life-size replica of the Phantom Blade, and we're going to be turning it into a functional weapon. I removed the screws so that I can see the inner workings of the replica. It'll give me a good idea at how they actuate the blade and the crossbow, and give us a starting point for where we want to go to make the actual weapon. So we've got three main levels on the piece. The lower level, which contains the hidden blade, the mid-level, which is both top and bottom for the other assemblies, and then the top section, which holds the spring mechanism and the firing mechanisms for the crossbow. We've deconstructed one of the bows so that we could get all the parts and mold them. So what we've done is we've used a two-part dental mold that I can then do the wax injecting into. After making the waxes for the buckles and the crossbow sections, Lauren sets them on a tree and invests them so that we can do the casting. After the metal temperatures fall below 900 degrees, we quench it into water and it reveals all the pieces. Thankfully, all the small pieces, even the D-rings and buckles, turned out in the bronze. As some of you may know, I was an assistant to Tony Swatton on season four of Man at Arms where he forged his hidden blade from some cable Damascus and then gave me the leftover piece. We thought it would be really cool to add that piece into our billet as we forged our phantom blade. So this is the same piece of steel that he made his original hidden blade out of. We're gonna add some of our own cable Damascus to his original billet. We'll get some of that original Assassin's Creed juju in our phantom blade. This three-quarter cable that we'll be forging into our blade came from an overhead crane. After Kerry welded the ends of our three pieces of cable, we twist them tighter, which actually begins the forge welding. What Ilya is doing is he's making a basically a slurry of borax. We mix it in some water. That way, all the borax penetrates into all, all the crevices that you want. So this really just helps us out a lot, specifically with the cable Damascus. Forging the three bars square, Illy and I stack them on top of each other, weld them by hand, and go to the press. Our hydraulic press is an 80 ton press. That means it puts down 80 tons of force each squeeze. Uh, it's a lot more than we could do by hand, and it's a lot more efficient because it's a nice even squish. Using a special hot cut tool that Ilya made specifically for hot cutting on the power hammer, Ilya slices through the billet about 95% of the way through and moves to the anvil to fold it. Just before he closes the fold, we add in the hidden blade Damascus from season four. Ready for the power hammer. Now that we have our cable Damascus billet forge bolted, it's time to go to the power hammer and start drawing out our blade. That's really exciting to be uh, working on another Assassin's Creed build. If you guys have played Assassin's Creed 3, we actually made the tomahawk and a lot of the swords for the sound department. So when you're playing that game and you hear swords clank or you hear that tomahawk hit somebody, that's something that we made. That's the sound of our blades in the game. So it's really cool to be working with Ubisoft again. Using a 5 16 ball end mill on the Gorton milling machine, I relieve a slot where I can hide the springs to actuate the phantom blade. Originally there was a spring that pushed the blade. Uh, we're going to replace that with a pair of springs that are going to pull the blade out into position where it will lock into place. Here we got our cable Damascus uh, blade billet formed up. You can see we got a lot of extra meat, so I'll be grinding a lot of this down narrower, plus some leftover material to make our firing bolt out of the back end. 
The grinding of this dagger is a little different than a lot of other blades that we usually grind. In this case it'll be sliding on an upper and lower guide, so my grinds have to be perfectly true and flat. Got our edge bevels ground in. I'll go ahead and cut it off about right here. The center section between the bow hides the gears and locks that holds the bow in position and allows it to fold in and out. This is made on a lathe so that we can cut around the piece. I take measurements off of the replica and make it as close visually as I can. All of this additional metal in the back is going to get cut away. This additional metal is just there so that I have a way to hold it and I have we had a way to hold it on the lathe when we were doing the face cutting. Now that I have the stops welded directly to the blade, I rough assemble the parts to see how they're going to fit and check the springs to make sure everything's going to have clearance. Okay, so on the phantom blade, on the replica, we've got an auxiliary spring that does the firing, which is captured in the top of the three pieces. We're going to capture it in the middle, on the top of the middle section where they just hold the slider. We have multiple springs, much larger steel block, which is going to give the push to the bow, and that's going to push from behind while the bow itself also drives it, give it a little bit more distance on the chute. Now that our blade is ground to shape, our parts are cast, and Carrie is working on the mechanism, it's time to hand the project off to John to do the leather work. This project has anywhere between 800 and 1,000 holes to stitch, and John's going to be doing it all by hand. Stitching something like this by hand, as you can see, is very tedious and time consuming. It'll take quite a few hours to get this and the remainder of the parts complete. This dagger blade being much smaller than most sword blades we heat treat, I have to be very careful to make sure I don't burn the tip or the edges. Using a pair of tongs, I remove the blade from the forge and quench in oil. I then move on to the vise for straightening. I place the blade on top of the forge, where the radiant heat about 500 degrees is perfect to temper this blade. The middle of the blade is our good straw color. The edges are just barely plumb. That's right on the money for the temper that we want. After tempering, it's now time to polish the blade. I start at a 120 grit and work my way up in order to prep it for etching. Now I'm sticking our cable Damascus phantom blade into some ferric chloride. It's about a two to one ferric to water mix. This acid will etch each material quite differently, showing our beautiful pattern. The circular center section of the bow has small indented cuts all the way around the outside. I take a tilting indexer, set it in place, use a tiny cutter on the milling machine, and go all the way around it, cutting each one of the small indents. Alright, I got my the other end of the cable Damascus billet drawn out to about the size of the bolt. I drew my little pattern on here, now I'm going to use the edge of the contact wheel and grind those indentations in. After grinding and polishing, I etch the bolt to bring out the pattern. Using the marble bandsaw, I cut down some desert ironwood. Desert ironwood is very strong and will work well for the bow arms. Alright, Carrie got these rough to shape, but now it's time to get them fitted in the sockets. I sand the bow pieces, taking minimal material off and checking the fit as I go. One of the last things I need to do is mill the hole out for the blade release. The blade release actually penetrates through all three levels of the phantom blade assembly. I have to take the center section, drill it out, mill it, and then actually file it all to fit because the release has to be strong. Got our cable Damascus blade, the release, the spring latch and lock is going to be fitted into here. We're going to set the beginning of the springs. I'm going to turn that over. Second level of the piece, we've got the spring for the release for the bow, the slider that holds the bolt. We're going to put on the top level, so we're going to come down gently on the spring area. I've got a pair of screws that come all the way through the entire piece. The bow assembly, as you can see, is already together. The next thing that we have to do is set this rivet to hold the front of the springs and then when we do a final we'll just take a slight peen on this side that'll become a floating rivet holding the springs. There's a notch in the bottom of the bronze that's going to hold the string. The release mechanism catches in these slots so we can set the bolt. We still have to set the final button and there's a large spring that'll shoot the blade out and lock it back and forth. There we are. That's our phantom blade. The phantom blade was far more complicated to build than I initially thought. 
I'm very happy with the way it turned out, and I think it looks great. Thanks again to Ubisoft for giving us this opportunity. for watching this episode of Man at Arms. Unfortunately, we can't give you the Phantom Blade from this episode, but if you want to own a really awesome limited edition collectible, click on the link below. Trust me, it's a must have for Assassin's Creed fans everywhere.